Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoy this review, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all that you would like to share, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. Orville Peck, Bronco. Orville Peck is a South African-born, Canadian-based singer-songwriter, an anonymous figure as well. Never publicly showing or revealing his identity, he's definitely one of the more enigmatic figures in country music and in the critical sense as well. I've been seeing his name floating around, often in very positive lights, as an amazing storyteller. So when I got this request to cover Bronco, Peck's sophomore and latest album as of recording this video, I was very excited to finally dip my toes in and see what I've been missing, especially finding a new love for country music in general thanks to this YouTube channel. So let's just dive right in. What are my thoughts on Bronco? Let's find out as I review it track by track. Since I couldn't find if there were any singles, we will just start at the top of the track list with that being Daytona Sand, which instantly lets you know exactly what you're here for. It stands out from the monotony of modern country in so many ways. The first and most prevalent being Orville's deep, almost menacing voice. It almost sounds stereotypical, but it's performed of the utmost sincerity. The percussion is also fantastic, sounding like horses galloping across vast distances. It builds up so much intensity and can't help but sucker a listener in. And the guitar and bass only add to that. These lyrics seem to share in the demise of this relationship, seeing Orville slowly decay and fall into this depressive hole. That compelling voice really helps to sell this song, and it's such an exciting opener. The Curse of the Black and Eye, which definitely mellows things out right after the vivacity of the opener, kicking things off with these isolated drumming reminding me of frame drums. The cries of the guitar really harken back to some of the classic country I know a la George Jones. And my god, Orville's vocals are so good. His reserve falsetto for the chorus just feels transcendental. It was really on this track when I realized that this guy has such a well-balanced voice that can strike a lot of chords. As these lyrics seem to be about these negative thoughts always following you around. Doesn't matter what you're doing or where you're at. Amazing track. Out of Time is a simple song, but man, this is a banger. Mostly driven by this breezy acoustic guitar strumming, the occasional electric guitar flourish later in the song, and some standard country rock percussion. It doesn't do anything mind-blowing, no soaring climax, no grand opulent buildup, but Orville's vocals, again, I cannot praise them enough. He's got such a resonating voice, it is so captivating. Another fantastic song. Lafayette returns to the energetic style ignited by the opener, and while it may not have the intensity of that song, it still really packs a punch and kind of reminds me of Springsteen. It's got some stamping percussion, lush guitar work, another fantastic vocal effort, and this impactful solo. It all just feels like a very carefree song, one to just snap along to. Don't really have much else to add here, it's just a really good song. Come On Baby Cry seems to be one of the bigger hits from this album, and this one seems to do a very similar thing that Out of Time did, in that it's not a groundbreaking song by any means, but if you can say no to the pounding aggressiveness of the percussion, the twangy guitar-like and soaring vocal presence, you're a better person than I am. The lyrics as well are pretty sweet, encouraging the significant other to open up and be vulnerable. It's not my favorite here though, I do think that Adoration should go to a more standout song in my opinion, but this still hits pretty hard. Iris Rose is the first true instance of a slower track here, opening up with the soul intimate guitar and Orville's powerful voice. The track gradually begins to expand, however, with some marching band-esque percussion and some more melodious brass for the chorus, which is a very nice touch. Really helps the track stand out and only increases in volume throughout the track's duration. Very serene song here, love it. Kalahari Down, the longest track on the album, being very close to five minutes, and this one starts off a bit bluesy with the reverberating harmonica ringing through the emptiness of the intro, which slowly seems to turn into the emotional centerpiece of the album. The eerie echoing of the guitar, the lovely strings hanging in the background as Orville's vocals just punch through it all, like he's on stage and the spotlight is shining down on him. As he passionately sings about recollecting these memories about his hometown and how he felt so trapped and couldn't be himself there, very bittersweet emotions all around. Powerful track, really like it. The title track, Bronco, is an alright track. I'm not gushing over this one, but it's by no means a bad song at all. It starts off with this gentle plucking, which suddenly becomes much faster, paving the way for a fiery song with a lot of motion, the perpetually rattling shaker, galloping percussion, and some dense guitar work. But is it just me, or is Orville mixed a bit worse on this song than any other song here? He sounds a bit quieter than usual, and in conjunction with the louder instrumental, he gets a bit muted as a result, which seems like a crime to muffle such a powerful voice. Aside from that though, this one is kind of just alright. Trample Out the Days is definitely the slowest track so far. The verses feature this slow, wallowing guitar, moody percussion, and brittle snaps. 
Orville really relishes in the opportunity, delivering one of his more emotionally resonant vocal efforts here, not necessarily by going all out, but just letting the infused emotion out, especially on the amplified chorus where he both soars vocally and lets the gritty anger come out. It's a satisfying little tonal shift for the album, I really like this one. Blush probably has the strongest tinge of pop on any song on this album. For one, the instrumental is pretty stagnant, but also very clean. The guitar has an accessible serenity to it, even with the heavier, more rock-oriented percussion. We also get some of Orville's most polished vocals on the album here. Even when he belts out for the chorus, it never digs into that grit he pulled from earlier cuts. Apparently, Orville wrote this song about his time spent in London and wanted to make England's version of country music, which explains the tonal shift into popular territory. Either way, still like this a good deal. Hexy Mountains is a fantastic way to ease up the tempo of the album. It's got some nice, calm percussion, crying electric guitar, and virtuous acoustics. Orville's vocals probably shine the most here over any other track up to this point. It feels so honest and wholesome, and I also love the plucky solo just after halfway through. It's not prominent at all, but it does just enough to add this breezy characteristic to the tune. Amazing song, one of my favorites of the slower ones here. Let Me Drown tones things back even more, being the first true instance of a full-on ballad. Purely piano and string driven, no percussion, guitars, nothing like that, and it's absolutely gorgeous. With how heavenly the instrumental is, the emotional weight was going to live or die based on Orville's voice, and he immediately one-ups his performance on Hexy Mountains. This is one of the best performances I've heard on any country album. Phenomenal track. Any Turn brings the album back to its energetic beginnings, and it's got a very nostalgic patter to it. The train of thought as delivery to the verse is very appealing behind the chugging percussion, electrifying riffs. It really packs a nice punch. I do think it's in a bit of a weird spot on the album. Would have liked to see this a bit earlier, playing off the other upbeat songs. Lyrically, the song just seems to be about spouting off the shenanigans during tour life, maybe some inside jokes scattered here and there. It's fun. I can't hate it at all. City of Gold returns to the slower songs suddenly, this time being an acoustic ballad, and it's probably the most classic sounding song on the whole album. It's got the haunting cries of the steel guitar that would typically follow the style of ballad, and of course the acoustic strumming being a bit updated to match modern production. Orville's vocals feel a bit more reserved for this track, and it's a comforting timbre to follow the style. Really like this one. And finally, the closer, All I Can Say, featuring Bria Salmena, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, ends the album on another ballad, and it's a very tender finishing note. It's got a bit more weight to it than City of Gold, the rattling percussion, sweet acoustic strumming, and these vocals. My god, these vocals! Bria's got a great voice, and the chemistry here between these two is one of the most striking things this album can deliver. Lyrically, the song just seems to be about leaving, whether it's this town, this relationship, I can't quite tell. They both sing about the same topic, so maybe they're both fed up with it in this concept. Either way, what a closer. Overall, man, Bronco is a fantastic album. Probably the best country album I've heard this year so far. Riveting instrumental work, an eclectic, talented vocalist. I've been sleeping on this dude, and I need to change that. And I'm so happy I got this request. I do think as a whole listen, the album is a bit one note, and especially near the end, the fun begins to die down a touch. But overall, a 15-track country album in the modern era, a resounding success. I'm feeling a 9 out of 10 on this album. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.